Hello and welcome to my channel. This issue of Halloween has really been troubling me recently. I didn't want to do this topic at all. It's such a dark, satanic, depressing subject, but I just felt I had to do it because I see everybody around us uh, getting involved. I see the shops um, pushing it and I see Christians asking the question. I have no idea why Christians are asking a question. Uh, we just have to read the Bible and all the answers are there, all the warnings are there, given clearly. But let's have a look at this subject, and this hopefully we'll have this done within 20 minutes. Okay, so Halloween, a nose hook to Babylon. Why a nose hook to Babylon? Well, keep watching and we'll, it'll make sense to you. The theme that we find in the Bible is that God calls his people out. Abraham was called out of Ur of the Chaldees, and that was where there was the Tower of Babel and sorcery and idolatry and witchcraft and child sacrifice. Uh, you can read about that in Genesis 12.1. So Abraham was called out from these things to something different. Remember, this, for, this planet has fallen, and um, God is calling out his people from the kingdom of darkness and from Satan's uh, deceptions. And again, um, Israel was called out of Egypt. Um, Egypt was the, the home of the sun god Ra, Anubis, the god of the dead, obelisks and Isis, Horus and Set was the, the, the trio there as well, IHS, I don't know if you've heard that before. And um, we read in Hosea 11.1, 1, When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. This is also referring to the Messiah, but... Initially, Israel came out of Egypt and went to the Promised Land. They came out of that, right? And uh, in Hosea, we're reading here that, that, that Jesus also came out of Egypt when he went there for protection from the, the death decree for babies under the age of two from Herod, remember? So he found safety in Egypt, and when, when Herod had died, then he came out of Egypt. But Israel was called out of sun worship and idolatry. And um, so this is a theme that you find in the Old Testament. And then even when the Israelites went into Babylon in captivity, they were, had to come back out. So what about the New Testament? And Jesus said, And I say also unto you, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now it's important to remember that that word Peter is Petros, um, which is a pebble. So you are Peter, the pebble. But upon this rock, pointing to himself, Petra, I will build my church. So Jesus is the rock upon which the church is built. But what is this word church? It's ecclesia. Ecclesia. Now ecclesia comes from ek, meaning come out, like exit. And then kaleo, which is to call in, in Greek. So ecclesia is called out. So let's always remember when we do these studies in the Bible, whenever we read the word church in the New Testament or in the Bible, it's not referring to a building, it's not referring to denomination, it's referring to the called out ones. I will build my called out ones, is what Jesus is saying. All right. And there's a final calling out in the New Testament as well. At the end of the world, in Revelation chapter 18, we read, after these things... John the Revelator he saw in vision. I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. So this is what the kingdom of light being represented. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, "Babylon the Great has fallen; has fallen; has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, a cage of every unclean and hated bird." And I heard another voice from heaven saying. Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive of her plagues. So we need to come out of Egypt not to receive the plagues, and we need to come out of spiritual Babylon at the end of time so we don't read her, receive her plagues. But remember, friends, this is not geographic Babylon. You and I are not living in geographically Babylon. It is spiritual Babylon. It is what what we believe and it is what we do and it's the practices that we're involved with and it's the belief systems we're involved with and it's with the spiritism or the, the um, practices of witchcraft and sorceries that we're involved with and we need to come out of those things, God says. My people, 
because his people are involved in this and they need to come out of it if they want salvation. And this is you and me at the end of the world. Okay, So it is a New Testament phenomenon as well of about coming out. So the origins of Halloween, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I'm going to show one or two things very quickly here. Catholic straight answers. Now for the pagan connection, and, and this issue is, this, this, this page is talking about All Saints Day. It's saying, November 1, okay, remember that, November 1, for, uh, marked Samhain, the beginning of the Celtic winter. Now the Celts were the, the people living in England 2,000 years ago, at the time of Christ and before. Okay, Samhain, for whom the feast was named the Celtic Lord of Death. Huh. So November 1 was celebrating the Celtic Lord of Death. You know, that should be enough. If this is celebrating the Lord of Death, uh, as Christians we should just say, that's enough, I don't have anything to do with this. I don't even know what, why we have to do this, this um, video at all. Let's keep reading. Um, the Eve of... Okay, so... The Eve of Samhain, October 31, was the time of Celtic pagan sacrifice. And Samhain allowed the souls of the dead to return to their earthly homes that evening. Ghosts, witches, goblins and elves came to harm people. Oh, seriously? Okay, so it was, a, it was an act, a spiritual haunting evening of sorts, where demons used to come and, and harass people. They thought it was the spirits of the dead, but it's really demons. Okay, and it says here, cats too were considered sacred because they, they would come. Now, just something that's, by the by, I've been speaking to people here locally, and right here, where I live, in my, this local town, in Michigan, um, I was being told by somebody who, in this high school, that um, somebody, a child was, a girl was um, asking for litter boxes in, in her, in the restrooms, because she identified as a cat. And she would start to defecate on the floor every day until they found and they caught her in the act and then they expelled her. Crazy stuff that is happening. All right, just crazy. Go and Google it. It's all over the place on the internet too. Okay, so back to back to Halloween. All Saints Day, this is on Catholic.org, um, is a solemn day of the Catholic Church. Okay, this is from Catholic Online. It is a solemn day of the Catholic Church. All right, it's not in the Bible, and it's not a Christian thing. It is something that the Catholics um, came up with. All right, and it carries on here. Generally, All Saints Day is a Catholic Holy Day of obligation, meaning all Catholics are required to attend Mass on that day unless they have an excellent excuse. Okay, All Saints Day was formally started by. Pope Boniface IV, who consecrated the Pantheon at Rome, so they took this pagan temple at Rome, and they consecrated it apparently to, to Mary and to the martyrs. Okay, so he decided to do this. And the choice of the day that might have been attended to co-opt the pagan holiday Feast of Lemurs, a day which pagans used to placate the restless spirits of the dead. So they're saying it may have something to do with that. <laughs> Seriously, they had 365 days to choose from, and they chose the same day. All right, so Britannica on Halloween, it says here that this day, All Saints Day, on the, uh, or Hallow's Eve on the 31st, is a Christian festival. Um, I object, friend, if you want to be accurate, it's Catholic. Thank you very much. There's millions of Christians who totally do not identify with that day and uh, it was a Pope who decided to make it such a day and then what it says here the two chief characteristics of ancient Halloween were the lighting of bonfires and the belief that of, of all the nights of the year this is the one during which ghosts and witches are most likely to wander abroad and we want to celebrate this thing Okay, and carrying on, the, uh, in the Druids held the autumn festival and lighted fires in honor of the sun god in thanksgiving for the harvest. No, we give Lord thanks. We give the Creator thanks for everything that we have. Not the sun god. Thank you very much. 
what on earth are we wanting to be involved with something like this? We have been called out of the sun god in, in Egypt, remember? And this is the thing. This guy was also the lord of death. So that's been confirmed here again. Now, did God give any instructions, or any warnings about these issues? Of course he did. Plenty. Um, I have had a problem just trying to whittle this, this presentation down to just a few um, verses because it's easy to talk for three hours on the topic because there's just so much in the Bible about it. But we're going to quickly look at a few verses, right? And this is just the easy reading English versions. So Exodus 22.18, You shall not permit a sorceress to live. Do, don't practice any kind of witchcraft. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. Who gives any of his descendants to Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. So whoever, whoever gives any of their children to Molech will be stoned. Now look at this. This is Exodus Leviticus, right? So this is straight after calling out um, the Israelites being called out of Egypt. So what is Molech? Who is this guy Molech? Why must somebody be stoned to death if they, if they give their descendants? Well, here they are. This pagan, demonic, grotesque um, idol made of metal. And uh, here they are making a ceremony of this great sacrifice, giving a child to this guy. All right. And um, as you can see here, an enlargement it always involved a fire, so they, they heated up this bronze image so that it was burning, burning hot. And as they would give this baby to Molech, the baby would be burnt and die. And it's called passing through the fire. And you read about it all over in the Old Testament. Um, let your children pass through the fire or their sons pass through the fire. It is absolutely demonic. Demonic. We should have nothing to do with these things. Okay, carrying on. And the soul that turns after such ha as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go whoring after them, I will set my face against that soul and I will cut him off from among his people. Cutting him off from his people meant cutting him away from his people which were in the covenant. So cutting a person off would be losing their salvation effectively. So this is a life and death situation we're dealing with here. God says, I, forgid, for, I forbid you to shave any part of your head or beard, to cut any tattoo yourself or tattoo yourself as a way of worshipping the dead. So we should have nothing to do with worshipping the dead or celebrating the dead. What is All, All Saints Day? Okay. Ah, uh, Brett, it's just a bunch of innocent fun. Really, just getting all uppity about this. It's just all about fun. Well, let's have a look. When God gave these warnings to Israel, they didn't heed them. And Israel slipped into apostasy over and over again, taking the religions of the cults and the, and the, and the Gentiles around them. Right, And so here is a really low point in Israel's history or in, in Judah. Manasseh and even set up a stone image of a foreign god. Manasseh practiced magic and witchcraft. He asked fortune tellers for advice and sacrificed his own sons in the Hinnon Valley and did many other things and made the Lord very angry. So he sacrificed his sons involved with witchcraft and magic. All right. He also sacrificed to Molech, basically. What happened as a result? The Lord tried to warn Manasseh and the people about their sins, but they ignored the warning. So prophet after prophet was sent to, to um, Israel and to Judah, and they stoned them, they rejected them, they scorned them. Verse 11, God let the Assyrian army commanders invade Judah and capture Manasseh. They put a hook in his nose and tied him up to cha in chains, and they took him to Babylon. Now, does that sound like a lot of fun? All this innocent fun? No, it doesn't sound like fun to me. So God called Abram out of Babylon with his sorcery and witchcraft. Okay, but Satan says, no, 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 come back, guys. Come back with all his witchcraft and everything. And so this guy is with a nose hook. He's taken back to Babylon. And the Assyrians were cruel, cruel people. Now, these are people with um, hooks in their lips or hooks in their tongues or even chin hooks as well. You read about that as well. Chin hooks where the hook went underneath your chin and through your mouth and they would just string people together and tow them along 
uh, just insane stuff. Doesn't sound like fun to me. What about the New Testament? About the calling out? And what about the warnings? So this is the New Testament church. Let's read what they said. Some who had been practicing witchcraft even brought their books and burned them in public. These books were worth about 50,000 silver coins. So they didn't sell them. They didn't take them to the second hand store. Friends, if we have anything, Harry Potter, sorcery, books of spells, Ouija boards, anything like that in our possession, that's giving the devil authority and territory in our, pos- in our homes, and we need to burn those things, destroy them, so that the curse cannot follow them anywhere else, and that nobody else can be deceived by these things. Burn them. There's an example in the New Testament. And Galatians, Paul writes, people's desires make them... Uh, give in to immoral ways, filthy thoughts and shameful deeds. It's not rocket science. Uh, and Adam, just don't eat of that fruit. Like, what is complicated about that? In Leviticus, don't get involved with witchcraft. Don't get involved with sorcery. It's not rocket science. Paul is telling, uh, telling us it's our desires to have something different. I know God says that, but, you know... I know God says, but, but it's just a fruit. How can it be so bad that people will be tortured and there will be wars and billions of people will die as a result of us eating this fruit? Just trust God at his word. They worshipped idols, practice witchcraft, hate, hate others, and are hard to get along with. They get drunk, carry on to wild parties, and do other evil things as well. I told you before, and I'm telling you again, no one who does these things will share in the blessings of God's kingdom. And you notice practicing witchcraft is, in, is included in that list. This is a life and death situation, just like in the Old Testament, being cut off from his people. And here we read, You are sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. When is Halloween? Of course, it's at night time. Okay. What did Jesus say about the subject? Representing the kingdom of light. I am the light of the world. You are children of light. Let your light so shine. These are words of Jesus. And then Jesus gives this warning, a very interesting warning. He says, Therefore take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. Now that's a strange thing to say, that the light in you is not darkness. I... Could it be, could it be, that we sometimes deceive ourselves thinking we are in a, in a right relationship with God. And you know, I, I've been baptized 20 years ago and I've given my life, so I'm saved and I'm all good. And uh, so nothing I can do can make me lose my salvation. We'll talk about that in another lecture. But this is a very interesting, this is a very interesting comment by Jesus. And he says, If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, the whole body will be full of light as when the bright light, bright shining of a lamp gives you light. So we need to be completely consecrated. No, don't hang on to any darkness. Don't hang on to any worldly stuff. Friend, God has warned us. He's given us the wiles of Satan. He tells us where the traps are, where the landmines are. He says, stay out of that area. Don't go there. I'm warning you. So trust me. But we just think we're better. And we play in the devil's territory. And we think we're not going to get hurt. It's just a whole bunch of fun. And just give me time. And I, you know, have me, let me have my fun. I'll get, I'll get more serious one day about going to church and all the rest. And, but finally, friends, finally, Satan will get us. If we play in the devil's territory, it'll be an issue of life and death. We think we know better than God. We think we somehow have, have better reasoning skills and better understanding than God. And God says, do this or don't do this. We just need to trust Him. And things will work out better for us. So these two things, having a look at Halloween now, a nose hook to Babylon, these are two totally polar opposites. We have darkness, demons, and death operating on a spirit of fear. And we have on the other side light, love, and life operating on the spirit of love. The kingdom of love, the kingdom of light. Let's no longer spend any more time in the darkness. 
also have a read of Philippians 4 verses 8 and 9. There's just so many verses I could have thrown in here and it's just so difficult to choose just a few. Here we read John saying, There is no fear in love. The whole thing about Halloween is to fear and to scare people as much as possible. Be as scary, look as scary. No, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. Satanic. But he who, ha- he who fears has not been made perfect in love. I just want to clarify something. I do believe that the scriptures are abundantly clear about what position we should take with this issue of Halloween as a Christian, as a Bible-believing Christian. And so that's my objective with this channel. The channel is truth is truth. And so I apologize not for any truth. However, some people may have felt that I was judgmental or uh, condemnatory. No, there is only one judge and there's one lawgiver. And so I'm not judging any individual or any group. I'm not condemning any person. But I am going to show and reveal what the Bible says about certain subjects. So friends, again, I appreciate you watching this video to the end. May you be blessed. And um, let's let's get really serious and just trust the simple word of God in our lives. Whatever God says, I trust it and I take it. Let's apply those things in our life. And I really appreciate you watching. God bless until next time.